Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video. Hope you find it to be an absolute blessing. Going to take a look at, um, could it possibly be 2024 a rapture? Not saying it will be, but the rapture will certainly happen. If you're not saved, get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, where he, Jesus, he died, he buried, and he rose. And when he died, he shed his precious blood nailed to a cross at Calvary. Why is that important? Why did he die that way? Well, he shed his blood to wash away, to pay for our sins when we don't deserve it. See, we've all sinned against God, and all your past, present, future sins need to be forgiven so you can live with God in the third heaven. Yes, we still did bad things in the flesh, but we're washed by the blood of Jesus Christ when you believe Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, verse 9 and 10. It's a heart belief, and you should be able to tell somebody whatever language you use or, or sign language or whatever it is, you could be able to write it down, how you're saved. Um, assuming you can do that, then you're saved. It's, it's just by the blood alone, not a work, so any man can boast. Going to jump into number seven reason why possibly 2024 could be the rapture. Again, only God knows the rapture date. The abomination of desolation. It's brought up, It's mentioned two times directly that way. It's, the word desolate is also in there a couple times. And we're going to look at four main verses that go along with this. Uh, Matthew twenty four fifteen is where we'll start, and the Bible reads, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, and whosoever readeth, let him understand. And then verse 16, Then let them which be in Judah, that's Israel, flee into the mountains. So we're going to go to the timeline here in a second, but I want to show you the verses on, on desolate or desolation and sort of what goes along with it. So the Antichrist is going to get power and is going to put himself up uh, in the temple and make the sacrifices to cease and claim himself to be God. We'll see a little bit more of what he does here in a minute. Let's go to Mark uh, 13, 14 again in the New Testament. And the Bible reads, uh, verse 14 of Mark 13, But when ye shall see the, uh, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judah flee to the mountains. In verse 15, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of the house. So it basically has to get out of there. Next verse talks about if they're in the field to just go ahead and leave to the mountains. So we see that here. Let's go back to Daniel. So what, what were these verses talking about um, that Daniel warned of? Let's take a look at the original source. We'll go to Daniel chapter 8 to begin in verse 13. And the Bible reads, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? So we know that they'll be trodden under underfoot. And the next verse goes on to talk about the 2,300 days uh, where the sanctification of the temple will happen at the end of the tribulation. But we're seeing here that it's going to be trampled underfoot. And then Daniel 11, 31 is, I think, a better verse for, for this. Verse 31, in arms of Daniel chapter 11, an arm shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice. We know that's the third temple and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. So that's a different way to say abomination of desolation is the abomination that maketh desolate. And so we know that it goes into verse 32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant, so that's that peace treaty, we'll talk about that in a minute, shall he corrupt by flatteries. So the Antichrist comes in at the white horse at the first seal where Jesus Christ opens the first seal, starting the tribulation period of time, and Antichrist rides on the white horse with, you know, his peace, a bow without an arrow. Um, peace treaty with many nations, including Israel, so the covenant with many. And in the midst of the week, in the middle of this seven-year period of time, in the middle, about the halfway point, three and a half years in, he's going to then break that peace treaty. That's when he's going to make that abomination of desolation cause the sacrifices to cease, put himself into the, into the third temple, the temple of God on earth, claim himself to be God, have a statue there that will then speak um, a great blasphemy to the Lord. And then the Jews will realize that they've been duped and flee to the mountains and 
and the Antichrist will try to kill the Jews. Let's look at uh, another verse. I didn't really put it on here. There's a couple more we can look at in Revelation. Let's go to Revelation uh, 13, 5 to start. And the Bible reads Revelation 13, 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. If we go back a little bit further, we will see this is when the satanic trinity, the, the beast is coming out of the sea, Antichrist is coming out. And in verse 3, he saw one of his heads that was wounded to death. We see that. Verse 4, And they worshiped the dragon, on which gave power unto the beast. So this would be the Antichrist. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who can make war with him? Let's go to Revelation. It's a verse that goes with it. 14, 9. And again, we're going to see the image here that he is put up. Uh, 14, verse 9. And the third angel follow, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast... In other words, the Antichrist um, and his image. So there's an image he has. And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Verse 10, it goes on to say there wrath that will come from God. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which, which talks about it being poured out on the indignation. And shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the Lamb. And it talks about that going on forever and ever. So we know that... You know, that this is the midpoint of the tribulation. We know the Antichrist is killed. I talked about that yesterday. And, and the Satan enters into him and Judas Iscariot um, and becomes the, 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 the man of sin becomes the son of perdition for the second half, which is called the Great Tribulation. But the anti what, what must happen is this abomination of desolation. Therefore, in order for that to happen, the church must be out. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's, it's Israel and God will deal with his people and Antichrist will. Um, go in and set up an image, and that's when the Jews will realize, hey, that's not the real Messiah. They've been fooled. It is uh, the devil. God bless. If you leave prayer requests, if you need them, leave them. God bless each and every one of you. It is a difficult time as for those in the church age. Um, are, a lot are struggling. So leave those prayer requests, and that's the benefit of this channel. God bless. Have a great day.